Is Sarah-san your girlfriend? Oh no! <laughs> He's talking out loud! Oh no! No! You can mess. Oh no. Oh no. It could be a counter-terrorist organization founded by a gorgeous female CEO named Miss Nozomi. <laughs> Just like a manga. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Hoodlumut here, back with some more Chaos Head Noah. And uh, last time, we got a little more insight into Takumi's life. Uh, got to see how he kind of grew up just a little bit, just some of the, just some, uh, like, a, like a, basically a flashback to a moment in his life of maybe why he kind of started being an outcast, you know, how, how he got into that mindset. Uh, he kind of did it himself. And I don't understand the reason for why he just decided to shut down, but he did. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. So that happened. And then, um, you know, back in normal, like in the present time, we went to the uh, uh, psychiatry ward to see if we can get help because Takumi believes, or, or at least he wants to believe that he's sane and everyone else is crazy and not the other way around, right? So uh, he tried to visit an old doctor that he used to go to when he was younger called uh, Dr. Takumi. Excuse me, Dr. Takumi? Uh, Dr. Takashina? Uh, <laughs> I hope Takumi's not a doctor. I, I really hope he, he can't help a soul right now. So I hope he's not, any, not trying to even go for a doctorate at this point. Um, and uh, Dr. Takashina told us that basically he thinks we might be a sleepwalker. Uh, that didn't happen, though, until uh, after we had this crazy delusion after I clicked one of the red buttons to just see what it would do. And it took us down this insanely paranoid delusion where uh, we were dreaming, because he apparently fell asleep for a little while, that we had never left the psychiatry, uh, psychi psychiatry ward. Uh, and uh, ever since we were little, we'd been there for seven years, and it was like a scary nightmare. Uh, so that was interesting. Uh, so anyway, to try and fix the sleepwalking that we may have had, we uh, took a nap, daydreamed about Seratan, and uh, nothing really too terribly weird happened uh, from that because I didn't click any buttons. And now we're here, starting to wake up. So uh, let's just get into this, shall we? I slowly opened my eyes. Oh, cute nurse. Someone was looking down on me from above. I accidentally made eye contact with them. It was... The nurse, Hazuki-san. <laughs> I frantically looked around myself. Just like before, I was lying on the hospital bed. So... Everything from when Seiratan had started talking to me was just a dream. Well, yeah. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> you ended up sleeping soundly for three hours. A full three hours? But it felt like I hadn't slept any more than five minutes. As I rubbed my eyes in a daze, Hazuki-san glanced at me, before covering her mouth as if she couldn't hold back a smile. Is Sarah-san your girlfriend? Oh no! <laughs> He's talking out loud! Oh no! No! Oh no, dude! Oh man, he's just blowing it with girls left and right, bro. He can't help himself. First, the one ends up being someone who's trying to investigate him. Now this girl, he's made a fool of himself. Although apparently she thinks it's funny, so I don't know. That's... Oh man. <laughs> Poor guy. What? You were muttering her name in your sleep the entire time. Oh no. <laughs> Even I could tell that I was going pale. I'd made one heck of a mistake. How could I have let someone hear me sleep talking? What's more, of all things I could have said, I'd blurted out Saraton's name. <laughs> Crap. So this is despair. I want to die. 
<laughs> oh no, I'm sorry, bro. But ultimately, you showed no signs of sleepwalking. As she opened the curtain, Hazuki-san conveyed that to me. Well, it's possible that symptoms didn't occur today by chance, so we can't definitively say that you haven't been sleepwalking. No, I really don't think I'm a sleepwalker, so... More importantly, I had to ask the doctor that really important question. But I couldn't see him anywhere. As I looked around, Hazuki-san handed me a blank form. Not really focusing all that hard, I took it from her and ran my eyes over it. It was a fill-in-the-blank style form. It's a checklist to assess your mental condition. It functions more or less like a psychological test. And the doctor said you can go home after filling it out. Uh, um, where's the doctor? I'm very sorry. He's very busy with other patients right now. He said to see how things go until next week and to come again if there's no signs of improvement. Then again, it wasn't like he was my primary physician or anything, I supposed. He'd probably just given Hazuki-san a bunch of directions to get me out of here. Well, guess that means there was pretty much no point to me coming to the hospital today. I really wanted to ask Dr. Takashina about the someone that wasn't me controlling me. Whatever it meant, it was a real chilling symptom. So I didn't want to leave without getting an answer. That being said, I didn't have the courage to demand Hazuki-san bring him back to see me, especially when she already looked so apologetic. Reluctantly, I decided to give the test a try. Guess I'd write about my symptoms on the back of the sheet or something. If I did that... I should be able to get another examination scheduled for next week. Okay. The test is very simple. Each question you answer with either yes or no. If the question is applicable to you, please mark the box labeled yes. It will be used as a reference so we can personalize your treatment going forward. So please consider your answers carefully. Hazuki-san went out of her way to explain the procedure thoroughly. The test had some strange questions mixed in. Ones you wouldn't normally expect to run into at a hospital. It really did seem like some sort of psychological test. Would they really be able to actually learn something from questions like these? <laughs> Hazuki-san stared at me intently. She showed no signs of leaving but it wasn't like she had nothing else to do or anything. It was more like she was monitoring. No, watching over me or something. My nervousness at being watched made it hard for me to think clearly. But I guess she was just doing her job. I wonder if she's someone that's going to be important, you know? She seems like she could be. What if she's watching us for more than just being a nurse, you know? What if the question she's asking us is because she's actually part of something that needs to know if we, like, see, or, or have had, like, uh, like the whole, like, uh, what did, um, uh, 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 um, uh, 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 like what you was said, the premonition thing, right? What if it's something like that? I don't know. It just seems like she's important somehow, but I can't really tell. Either way, I knew I ought to fill out the test quickly. Oh! Oh, I actually fill them out! Oh! <laughs> okay, wait, okay. Wait. Oh, this is actually like a straight-up form. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. All right. When you have business to take care of, you prefer to use emails over phone calls. Oh, yeah, for sure he does. Yeah, he doesn't even have a phone. <laughs> Your ears ring every now and then. They did that one time! 
They did that one time. Remember his ears his ears rang. So yeah, we should we should mark that down. Uh you have felt someone's gaze and turned around before. Well, yeah. Yeah, he has done that. You have seen objects that are supposedly stationary move for an instant. Uh did we? No, we never had that. That never happened. I don't think anything like that ever happened. I'll skip that one. You have experienced a premonition. I don't know, maybe. Should I mark it down? We don't actually know. Uh, it seems like we could have. I'm going to say yes. These are weird questions. There it is, though. It's premonition. She asked about it. She asked about the premonition thing, just like I was wondering. Dude, I bet this isn't for the doctor. I bet this is for... Uh, 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 what's her name? Ha uh, ha Hazuki? Ha ha Hazuki? Is that what her name was? Hazuki-san? I think it's for her. I don't think it's actually for the doctor, bro. Okay. When looking at a digital clock in passing, you've seen the same numbers appear in sequence. Wait, what? Oh, you mean like, you mean like 333 type of deal? Like 333? Uh, oh, in sequence. Wait, so you mean like 123 or 234 or something like that, right? Uh, I don't know if he has. I haven't yet in this game. I haven't yet. So so as of now, we'll say Takumi hasn't seen that. You have already cried once this month. Uh, did he? I think he did. <laughs> I think he did cry at one point. Didn't he cry? He cried over seeing the murder, I think, didn't he? I thought. Or at least was starting to tear up or something. I feel like he did. Did he? I'm going to write it down. I think he did. I think he did. I'm going to put it in there. You can mess... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, I don't know this. I don't know about Takumi's personal life, bro. Uh, you can masturbate using only your imagination. I don't freaking know Takumi's life, bro. I don't know. How am I supposed to answer that for him? I'm going to say... I don't know. He's got a vivid imagination. We'll say yeah. <laughs> when ma How many of these are there? How many questions of this are there? I don't want to answer this anymore. I don't want to answer it. I don't like this. When masturbating, you can visualize uninterrupted imagery. Well, <laughs> he can daydream uh, pretty well. He does have the ability to do that. He did that with uh, Seratan multiple times. So I can <laughs> We're going to say sure, because you can almost darn well imagine as as he is that this is something that has happened. So, uh, please no more of that. Please, please don't make me answer that anymore. You can daydream without closing your eyes. Uh, uh, well, if you count the murder that we maybe had, I mean, he did have to, in order to daydream just like, in the last episode, when he did the sleepwalking thing, he had to close his eyes. I don't know. Does that count? Because did the murder actually happen or was it a delusion? Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, he did daydream because when we clicked the thing for uh, for Yua and got that that lewd delusion, that was he wasn't closing his eyes. So, yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> the frontal view of a car sometimes looks like a face. Uh, I don't know. We didn't technically see that, but I mean, that is just, yes, that does, that is, I would answer it that way. I don't know about Takumi, though. Uh, he never said anything like that, so I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no only because we haven't seen him answer it that way, right? So, okay. You have a hard time going to the bathroom after watching a horror movie. I have no idea. I have no idea. We haven't watched a horror movie, so I'm going to say no. Uh, you cannot handle haunted houses. Again, we never did that, so I'm going to say no. When you start reading a book, you become so immersed in it that you lose track of time. Uh, well, he has the uh, Edoge books. I'm sure that he does, so we're going to say yes. <laughs> you believe that other planets inhabited by human-like creatures exist. Uh, he's never indicated that, so I'm going to say no. The personality attributed to your astrological sign matches your personality perfectly. 
I don't know what his is. They never talked about that. So I wonder if this was supposed to be tailored toward me, like the the player, the the person doing this. I'm still I'm still gonna answer as Takumi though, because I feel like that makes more sense. Um. So I I guess no, because I don't know what his his personality is. Like I don't know what his sign is or none of that. That is what I mean. Uh, you are prone to motion sickness. No, he hasn't shown any signs of that. You believe there is a god. I don't know if he does. I do. I don't know if he does. I don't know if Takumi does. Has he ever mentioned that? I don't think he's ever mentioned that. I don't think he's ever mentioned that. I don't know if he does. Uh, did, did he ever mention it during like the murder and stuff? I don't think he did. So I'm going to leave it undone. I don't think he did. You have a strong ability to sense the supernatural? Uh, yeah, I would say probably so, right? Because of the... Well, it depends on what you consider supernatural. Because, again, we don't know what's been happening. So if you're considering premonition supernatural, which I, I'm pretty sure he has had, uh, we, would, we should say that. So, and I don't... Again, the murder, when we witnessed that, I don't know if that actually happened. Or we're just kind of assuming it did. Uh, you have dreamed in color before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's done that. Uh, you have been in a dream in which you knew you were dreaming. Has he? I don't think he's had that yet. At least not yet. Not that I know of. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Uh, you have experienced memory loss. Yes, I think we did, right? If Well, okay, from a third-person perspective, I noticed it looked like he played the same day over one time, I think. It seemed like he did that, and he seemed to not understand that that didn't happen. Oh, yeah, but also with Shogun, he's thinking that he did, right? He's thinking he experienced memory loss, so that he would, he would probably mark that down, right? Yeah, so regardless, but yeah, okay. You have a hard time making eye contact with people. Yes, he absolutely does. Uh, merely the sight of sour food makes your mouth fill with saliva. Uh, I don't know anything about how he feels about that. So I'm going to leave that undone. Because he's never mentioned anything other than cola that he likes. And cola's sweet, so... I, I don't think... Yeah, I'm going to leave that unchecked. You feel like yawning when other people do. That's just, like, natural. I feel like any human being would do that naturally. So I... Should I answer yes for him? He's never done it, but... Okay. I'm not sure if they wanted me to answer this myself or not, but I answered it as Takumi. So that's how we're, that's how we're doing it. And uh, because I don't know some of these things in here, I gotta leave them unchecked. So I guess we'll just see. I don't know. Maybe I was supposed to answer it myself, but uh, I'm answering it as Takumi for now. Thank you very much for your time. Hazuki-san thanked me as I answered the final question, despite the fact that I hadn't said anything. I felt pretty embarrassed at being watched the whole time. My face was probably bright red. Because of that, I avoided looking at Hazuki-san when I handed her the test. There had been no time to write my symptoms on the back. Okay. So, I mean, he didn't, well, you, I mean, we, we checked off a bunch of boxes, though, that, that would have kind of been part of the symptoms, right? Kind of like, like you have lapses in memory type of stuff, right? Like, so, I mean, what he's calling someone controlling him could just be lapses in memory, right? Or another dimension thing. I'm still holding on to that theory, so... I mean, I don't know. I don't feel like he needed to write anything on the back, personally. Now then, please go and wait in the waiting room. We'll have your medication out for you in just a few minutes. See? Medication? Medication. Medication and you don't even know what's wrong yet. They said, it doesn't seem like you're sleepwalking, uh, but we still, you know, we're not gonna, like, say that it doesn't happen. So, you know, uh, fill out this questionnaire, and then you know, we'll set you up for an appointment next time, right? Why are they giving him medication? 
This is what I was talking about last episode, dude. They just met you, dude. He, they have no reason to give him medication yet, other than that he's kind of freaking out a little bit. But, like, like, you don't just handle these types of things with meds, dude. Like, he just needs someone to talk to. That's why he wanted to talk to the doctor. Gosh, that frustrates me, man. This is a freaking game, but I, it happens in real life, too. That's, that's really freaking real, dude. I don't like that. That makes me mad. I'm not taking it. If they give me the option, I'm not taking it. <laughs> uh-huh. Medication? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Medication. Like, what the frick? They were prescribing me something? Dr. Takashina never said anything about that. See? Okay, wait, okay. Before I just go, you know, all in on getting upset about the medical field and all that, alright? Again, what if it's a Hazuki-san here in front of us? She's part of something else. She's trying to give us some meds that, like, open up our mind, dude. Like, we're in the 70s. They're gonna, they're gonna expand our mind, man. And gonna ha have us be able to do more, like premonitions more easily or daydream but like have lucid dreams or something right she's gonna give us some like lsd to trip us out man <laughs> it's gonna freaking make us go crazy so that she can figure out if we have premonitions bro what if what if yes as per the doctor's orders it is a weak sedative you'll be able to sleep more soundly and there aren't any side effects so, like, they just are giving it to him because he can't sleep properly. So, what, like a, mel uh, um, a melatonin, basically? I don't know if that's considered a sedative, but it definitely, like, calms you down, and it's natural, so. But, like, still, you know? Like, there, there could be other reasons why he can't sleep. You don't just need to met him up. But I, I get it, because part of me knows, too, some people, when they go to the doctors, they expect to get, like, the magic pill, right? I just want the magic pill that takes away my issues. And so sometimes I wonder if doctors have done things at different times to just, like, pacify the patient that comes in, right? Because otherwise they'd be like, you didn't even do anything for me. I came in here. I pay all this money. I pay taxes and all this, you know, crap or whatever. And you didn't even do anything for me, right? And so it's like, this is a way to say, just, you know, do this and then come back in next time or whatever. Um, still, I don't like it. I don't like just taking meds when it's like figure out the root cause of the issue don't just put a band-aid fix on it you know what i mean why aren't you sleeping well figure that out and solve that and then maybe you'll sleep better and you won't need that that's all i'm saying i'm not taking it i'm not taking it if they if they give me the option i'm not, I'm not taking it oh wow thoughtful as ever dr takashina and yet when i realized i would have to wait in that lobby again my mood was immediately sent spiraling. Huh. I don't know, man. I wonder if Hazuki's... She's... I, I bet she's someone important. Oh, there's a lot of stuff. Wait a minute. There's a lot of stuff going on. Value of death. Life is suffering caused by desire. To end the suffering, we must end desire. Interesting. <laughs> it's kind of poetic. The contagious madness. The unchanging me. I wonder if that's, like, uh, foreshadowing something. All right, looks like we're at a subway station. By the time I'd gotten back to Shibuya, it was already evening. The hospital was technically in Shibuya Ward, but since Yoyogi was the closest station to it, commuting via train was the fastest. But the Yamanote line had been as crowded as ever, and despite only being two stops long... The trip back still made me incredibly tired. Riding the train any farther would have been a pain in the butt, so I decided to get off at Shibuya Station and make my way back to the base from there. Even then, there were still tons of people outside the station. I despised crowds. They made my head spin. Not wanting to stay much longer, I tried to speed walk out of the scramble crossing. Did you run into Neku? <laughs> but even walking straight was nigh impossible. Stumbling even slightly caused people from both behind and in front to bump into me. What's more, a bunch of people handing out pocket tissue packs blocked the way, practically forcing everyone who passed by to take them. Fed up with everything, 
I ignored the first person handing them out, but took some off of the second because at least she was a cute girl. <laughs> Priorities. Priorities. I was so sick and tired of these people handing out tissue packets and crap to push their products. Didn't they have anything else better to do than stand right in the middle of the road? Well, whatever. It was free, so I might as well take it. Inside the tissue pack I took was a red flyer, and there was a paragraph's worth of crap written on top of it with white ink. Talk about ostentatious. Like, holy crap. You couldn't exactly miss something with that color scheme. <laughs> As I walked along, I gave it a quick skim. Type B blood is in short supply. Oh, they're blood donors. Okay. Currently, Shibuya Ward is suffering from a severely short supply of type B blood. Uh, this has only continued to worsen, and we've been struggling to secure the proper quantities of blood for those in need of transfusions. In the worst case scenario, this may lead to the deaths of many. Without your cooperation, lives may be lost. Please consider becoming a blood donor and visit the donation uh, something at Shibuya Station of the Inokashira, I think is what that is, uh, line. Okay. It was a blood donation flyer. As I read it, I thought back to the form I'd filled out in the hospital. I didn't have any memory of filling out something like that four years ago. Maybe the way they examined patients had changed recently. Nope! Nope! See? I'm telling you! Well, so, but if they didn't have you do it in the past, that's weird because I feel like they've done it for a long time, right? I mean, this was what? This, this is a game in 2007, right? So he's saying four years ago that'd been 2003? They were having you fill out stuff in 2003, okay? So, I don't know, but he's saying if he doesn't remember doing it and it's new? Hazuki's up to something, man. She's up to something. She's up to something. She's up to something. Even then, though, something felt oddly familiar about the test. Interesting. Deja vu. I'd been getting hit by it all the time recently. Having my mind and body not function the way I wanted them to. The sense of dissonance was an incredibly uncomfortable feeling. So, in order to ascertain the true cause behind the déjà vu, I tried flipping back through the pages of my memories. I thought back to when Mom had taken me to the hospital about once a week. I'd kept my mouth shut at all times and only expressed myself via nodding or shaking my head. Again, why? I don't understand why you did this. It doesn't make sense. At first, I'd been taken to a perfectly ordinary examination room. But since I showed no signs of improvement, I started going to a different room before long. The room had essentially been a counseling room, which meant it put the patient's relaxation first and foremost. In other words, there were sofas and plushies and whatnot located all throughout the room. Dr. Takashina had taken a very patient approach to treating me, all while refusing to blame my situation on anyone. He alone caught on to how I was merely choosing not to speak, rather than having the inability to do so. Like, were you an attention seeker? I just don't get it. Meanwhile, my mom would always talk to me in an unnatural, cheery voice. Every time I'd gone to the hospital... The doctor would always welcome me with a refreshing smile. The nurses also treated me with all the love and care they could. And... Hmm? And... I, I had a feeling that there had always been one more person in the room. Oh, yeah! I forgot about him, yeah, and the other thing. I, I wasn't really thinking about that because of what was going on. But yeah, the guy in the back, what the frick? Right. There had been a man in a black suit. One that felt fairly out of place in, in a hospital. As I'd been doing my best not to speak, 
I never asked about him. I didn't know who the heck he was the entire time he was there. He didn't feel like a doctor, and he always stood all alone a fair distance away from everyone else, all while gazing out the window. I had dubbed him Mr. Nozomi in my head, though that wasn't his actual name or anything. Nozomi? The man in the suit always had a badge on his chest, no matter the situation. And on that badge was the word Nozomi. It looked like a logo to me, though, so it probably wasn't a name tag. Oh, I knew why it was bothering me now. That test from before also had the Nozomi logo printed on it. Interesting. I had a hunch that I'd seen it somewhere before, and now I finally remembered exactly where. It was like a huge weight had been lifted off my chest. Is this like the organization that that uh, uh, Okabe in Steins Gate always was like, like, you know, freaking out about that didn't exist, but in this game it actually does exist? Is that kind of the thing? Because, like, I guess you could say CERN was the, the organization or whatever in Steins Gate, but, like, in this in this game, I wonder if it's, like, I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to I'm trying to see where stuff connects to Steins Gate. I've been trying to pick up on that, but I've only seen some kind of more Easter eggy type stuff. So, all right. That aside, what was Nozomi anyway? I was pretty sure it was the name of a business. It could be a counter terrorist organization founded by a gorgeous female CEO named Miss Nozomi. <laughs> Just like a manga. <laughs> Dude, he mentioned organization though, bro. I'm just saying. My conspiracy theories are all going to come true. Just you freaking watch. Watch me be so freaking smart, dude. When I'd arrived at my base, I'd gone straight to look up Nozomi online. However... There were so many results that I couldn't manage to pin down anything specific. Well, let's go with a more normal theory first. That Nozomi guy could have been from the company that made the test, and he was just at the hospital in order to sell them or something. The hospital had then adopted the tests recently, and they decided to have me fill one out today. <sighs> nah, I doubted that. I'd never heard of some rando attending a patient's examination like that. So, who the heck was that Mr. Nozomi guy? Memories kept pulling at my mind, but I was fed up with it at that point. Dude, he's spying on him. I wonder if he knows something. They know that he's got this premonition power or something, right? That, that you would thinks that he has or is pretty sure? Ah, oh, dude. Either way, the reason behind my deja vu was now clear. I decided that I'd ask Dr. Takashina about my memory issues next week. But until then, I was going to stay cooped up in my room without bothering with school. There was no way in heck I'd go to a school where people were trying to hurt me. In all honesty, I really don't want to screw up the minimum attendance chart I'd so carefully constructed. But... It wasn't worth getting myself killed over. I gave up on my Nozomi search and went to look for any interesting-looking threads on at channel. New gen... News bearer. Uh, group dive, man-child, crucifixion. Oh, maybe it did happen then! Crucifixion, wait a minute, okay. To be continued, shutters. What the frick? Okay. The news board was almost completely filled with new-gen threads. Even the ESO board had threads like, Let's try and replicate new-gen crimes in ESO. And to be honest, I was beyond sick and tired of the whole thing. Okay. Diving back into ESO, I found Grimm. Oh, got a yeah, okay, there we go. 
I always <laughs> it always catches me off guard. Uh, the the at channel news board is super freaking boring recently. They really won't shut the heck up about new gen. Well, it is the biggest thing of note recently. Whenever a new incident like this happens, people always freak the heck out about it. Crapstorm incarnate, lol. <laughs> they still haven't caught the culprit? I mean, you and I both know the police are incompetent, lol. There's tons of idiots all over to web painting the culprit as some moe hot chick, lol. But that's exactly what he saw, though. That demon girl. The desolate eyes of the girl I'd seen at the crucifixion murder scene flashed through my mind, and I felt a shiver run down my spine. As much as I didn't want to remember, that ghastly memory would come back any time I let my guard down. Wait. I'd seen the culprit's face. I knew who they were. Sh should I report it to the police? But I didn't want to get involved. Demon girl? Is there already an offshoot of the perp like that? No way. These new gen cases are seriously interesting, dude. I've joined the free para new gen community. You're getting way too into this. Everyone but you and Sisson? Sisson. Oh, from our guild has joined. Aw oh, man, was he serious? Now I wouldn't be able to hop on and chat with my guild anymore. Nugen is some weird crap, man. Gives me the chills. I knew you were into gory stuff, Grim, but... <laughs> Don't tell me you're the type that looks for artistic merit in murder cases. True, the crucifixion corpse could have easily been mistaken for modern art. So, it'd be fair to say that it was artistic in some sense. Nah, the only thing you should be seeking here is how lewd it is. It's like the ultimate form of BDSM. This guy's hopeless. I'd better do something quick. <laughs> You'll get it once you leave behind your virginhood, Nidhartan. You lowly jerk. Are you saying you're not a virgin? Hehe. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you darn traitor! <laughs> Back on topic, though. <laughs> the site pooling all the info together is filled to the brim. So you really ought to take a look. Ugh. I really didn't want to look. I was scared to. I wanted to escape the reality in which I'd witnessed the scene of the crime. That's why I'd been intently avoiding all info related to New Gen ever since then. I wanted to fool myself into believing that the gruesome scene I'd seen had been just a delusion. But... I was basically a god in ESO. Not just someone strong, but someone who knew all. Not to mention, I was the guild leader. It'd be beyond embarrassing if the organizer of the group couldn't keep up with the latest topics. I had to make sure that didn't happen. <laughs> I clicked the link to the site Grim had sent me. Okay, what are we going to find on here? The top of the site had the title, All Things New Gen, written in big letters right in the center of the page. This type of website was basically like a wiki. It was open to the public, and anyone could enter info related to a particular topic. In the case of this New Gen site, loads of people entered info concerning New Gen, and the site updated as they did. Sites like it tended to suffer from unreliable info being mixed in, as well as its fair share of vandalism from trolls, but they could still be pretty useful for getting a quick overview of an incident. Many links were pasted all over the page. 
I promptly clicked on the link that read Current Timeline. My heart raced. Just reading the site was making me nervous. My palms were slick with sweat. Uh, okay. Let's see, what do we got here? The earthquake two months ago. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. Nothing really to look at. Okay. The first incident dubbed the group dive was the suicide of five high schoolers that had jumped to their deaths. It happened in the dead of night on September 7th, which was about a month ago at this point. The building they jumped off of was Cornelius Tower, which was located in Shibuya. They dove off the rooftop helipad. Of course, all five had died instantly. According to the autopsies, the five all had foreign pieces of flesh under their fingernails. Ew along with various scratch marks on their hands. I think I remember it saying that, but yeah, that's gross. Based on that, it was surmised that the five had been holding hands as they jumped, for one reason or another. Oh, okay, I get you. There was no suicide note of any form on the rooftop. A person online, one of those people acting like Snake, had actually gone to Cornelius Tower themselves and reported that the door to the roof had a sign on it saying no entry to unauthorized personnel and that it was locked practically 24-7. Naturally, the door had been locked at the time of the incident and the key was not found among the belongings of the deceased. Essentially, the rooftop helipad had effectively been a locked room and the method the five had used to enter was completely unknown there was a very high chance that someone other than the five had been present at the scene of the incident. The second incident, dubbed the man-child murder case, had occurred 12 days after the first incident, placing it on September 19th. Early in the morning, a university student on their way home from a karaoke session had discovered a collapsed man covered in blood by the Shibuya Station underpass. The victim had been a university student residing in Shibuya Ward, a 21-year-old named Konoe Chizou. He was already dead when he was discovered, but his abdomen had an unnatural, very large swelling. According to the autopsy, someone had performed an abdominal incision on the man, stuffed a newly born fetus inside the man's stomach, then stitched it back up. Oh, I think I remembered them saying that. Yeah, that's screwed, bro. Moreover, a DNA test confirmed that the fetus had no blood relation to the victim. The victim was a bachelor and had no relations with any women. It was only online speculation, but it was assumed that the 32-week-old fetus had been removed from its mother's body via C-section. However, the mother's identity, current whereabouts, and even whether or not she was alive was completely unknown. It was possible that the police had already discovered her whereabouts, but if they had, nothing had been publicly revealed. Huh. Oh. <laughs> I averted my eyes from the monitor to keep myself from throwing up. Oh my gosh. Talk about nauseating. The culprit was completely insane. And maybe, just maybe, these ghastly murders. <laughs> had been carried out by that girl. Japan is over! Woo! I stared at Seratan in an attempt to bleach my eyes. The heck is Japan is over? <laughs> what? And with that, I somehow managed to stabilize my mental state. I considered taking the meds the doctor had given me, but Seratan did the job nonetheless. Anyway, while that might have been necessary to maintain Nidhart's honor, reading all that gory stuff really freaking sucked. <laughs> The heck? 
What was that? <gasps> Oi! Oh, hi. If it's so hard, then you don't have to read it, you silly goose. Though if you're a super masochist, then I won't stop you, Taki. I just can't bear to see my Taki go through so much pain. So, why don't you just stop? We can just stick to the fun things in life. You can just fap to me like you always do, silly. Oh my gosh. Ah! Oh, how wonderful and caring you are, Seraton. Bro. Seraton was the only one who would stay by my side. I couldn't ask for a better waifu. Yikes. I rested my chin on my hands above the table, watching Seraton smile as I took deep breaths. Ah. <sighs> my soul had been healed. I might be able to get through a little more if I just kept glancing at her as I read. And so, I decided to put that into practice right away. <laughs> Come to think of it, why had those two unrelated cases both been slapped with the new gen label? Apparently, the group dive had initially been treated as a group suicide. But after the man-child incident had occurred, people online reinvestigated it and discovered the unnatural circumstances surrounding the scene of the crime. Rumors then began to appear, saying that the five may have actually been killed and that the suicide label was merely a cover-up. According to the parents and good friends of the five victims, there was no way it could have been a suicide. Then, the mass media had started making connections between the two incidents, starting with where they occurred, Shibuya. Madness explodes in today's youth. The new generation madness. Sensationalist headlines like that had started popping up everywhere. To my understanding, anyway. Then came the third case. The murder case I'd witnessed, dubbed the Crucifixion. Huh, so it did actually happen then. So then why did everything seem so weird when that was happening? I don't get it. The site didn't have as much info on this case, likely due to it having only occurred recently. The victim, 56-year-old Oda Hisashi, was a university professor who had been crucified with stakes to the concrete wall of a vacant house. That was all that had been publicly revealed. Many of the neighboring residents had claimed that, for over an hour after the time the crime was thought to have occurred, around 8 p.m., they could hear the sound of nails being hammered into something. Even I'd heard the sound. I could hear it even now. A horrible, terrifying sound. On a related note, no connection between the third case and the group dive or the man-child had been discovered yet. But with it being the third abnormal incident to happen in quick succession in Shibuya, the crucifixion was naturally treated as another new-gen incident. The police and mass media believed that all the crimes had different culprits, but the predominant opinion online, or rather, what most of the net hoped was going on, was that the crimes either shared a single culprit or an organized group of culprits. The organization, baby! Oh my gosh. Okay. There also were many occult-based theories whispered about online, such as that everything had begun with the earthquake from two months ago. Two months ago, an earthquake with a seismic intensity of three occurred, with Shibuya at its epicenter. Oh, gosh. Although the scale was fairly minor, there were still eight fatalities, which became a popular topic of discussion. Come to think of it, it was true that the new-gen cases had begun after that earthquake. Because of that, the new-gen occultists argued that the eight deaths 
in the earthquake should be counted as the first New Gen incident, causing a dispute between them and the New Gen mainstreamers. Regardless, the entire situation was abnormal. After all, despite the fact that three brutal cases had occurred in quick succession, no clues on any of their culprits had been found. And many online were waiting eagerly for a fourth case. If I wasn't directly connected to it all, I probably would have joined in on the chaos myself. Posted in a few threads, made a few theories. I could have been waiting excitedly for the fourth incident at this very moment. Darn it! All these jerks were just having the time of their lives, weren't they? Please, just catch the culprit already. A week had passed since the crucifixion, but neither the demon girl nor the police had made any moves. If they knew I'd been at the scene of the crime, they would definitely come and question me about it. But there hadn't been any signs of that actually happening. Th thank God. <sighs> it looked like I wasn't going to get dragged into this after all. Do you have precognitive powers? That claim Yua had thrusted at me flashed into my mind. Well, right here is an unaccountable digital picture that can only be explained by precognitive powers. That's why I had to ask. Even though I'd finally started to relax, that feeling of despair came flying right back in an instant. The image sent by Shogun. The data was still on my PC. Yua's claims were no more than delusions she'd dreamt up. Her deductions were a total stretch, not to mention logically bankrupt. While I might have ended up not asking about it in the hospital today, the idea of me doing things without remembering them was completely absurd. Utterly impossible. I mean... Nothing like that had ever happened to me before. So the gory image was obviously faked. In that case... You should find proof that it's fake. So, let's give the picture a little look-see. But... It's so disgusting. I really don't want to look at it any more than I already have. If you destroy that bimbo's argument, Taki, you'll be able to go back to your peaceful life, don't you know? And if you do that, there'll be nothing to fear no longer. So you know what you gotta do. Of course, she was exactly right. Yua had talked to me as if I were the culprit behind the crucifixion, but that wasn't true at all. I mean, I'd seen the culprit's face. As if I'd let Yua put the blame on me after all that. So, with a gulp, I double-clicked on the folder where the images were cached. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 